welcome back to Lilybug's Library. My name is Linda and uh, today we're going to talk about September. Uh, it's coming up quick. I um, haven't I haven't got as much read over the past couple of weeks as I would have liked. I was hoping to read a few more um, books for this month but um, looks like I'm running out of month. So I got a couple I'm finishing up but um, let's move on to what's going to happen in September. I know a lot of people are already starting into their fall cozies and their fall romances. I'm not quite there yet. I am hanging on tight to the end of uh, summer and um, technically September is not until, you know, September 20th or 21st or something. So we're going to try to squeeze out a little more um, before we get into our uh, cozy uh, seasonal mysteries and things because I love doing that. But I'm kind of waiting till October and then there'll be a lot of paranormal cozies and things like that and then we'll lead into Christmas and you know we'll get to those but uh, for now I've had um, a few people say they'd really like me to do some um, uh, Regency romances and things like that so that's what we're gonna do for September we're gonna do uh, Regency romance September so I've got a few listed here I'm not um, I'm not great about even uh, knowing who to read necessarily for some of these. Um, I've learned a lot more about them over the past, you know, few months, but um, hopefully these are good ones. And sometimes I find the synopsis for them is quite long, so I'll make them as short as I can, but I do want you to still know kind of what it's about. And I'll be quite honest, I picked all of these um, by looking at the cover. I haven't read the synopsis on any of them yet, so fingers crossed that they all turn out to be good ones. So the first one is called uh, Mask of Duplicity, and it is book one of the Jacobite, Jacobite, is that Jacobite, Jacobite, I think, Chronicles. Uh, and it says, following the death of their father, Beth's brother Richard returns from the army to claim his share of the family estate. However, Beth's hope of a quiet life are dashed when Richard dissatisfied with his meager inheritance and desperate for promotion decides to force her into a marriage for his military gain and he will stop at nothing to get his way. Beth is coerced into a reconciliation with her noble cousins in order to marry well and escape her brutal brother. Oh my, this is sounding uh, like Catherine Coulter with these uh, cousins. She is then thrown into the glittering social whirl of Georgian high society and struggles to conform. The effeminate but witty socialite Sir Anthony Peters offers to ease her passage into society and she is soon besieged by suitors eager to get their hands on her considerable dowry. Beth, however, wants love and passion for herself and to break free from the artificial life she is growing to hate. So, this should be interesting. I'm, uh, it says the first in the series about the fascinating lives of beautiful Beth Cunningham, her family and friends, during the days leading up to the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. So, anyway, that one sounds interesting. Um, a little concerned about what she's doing with the cousins. Like, I hope that she's not going to be trying to marry one of them, because that seems uh, like that's not supposed to happen. So, don't know. We'll see. The next one is called uh, Gabriella, and it's number one of the Hyatt Regency Classics. So it says, due to a lost wager, the Duke of Ravenham is obliged to bring a pretty little nobody from the country into fashion among the high sticklers of London society. So it sounds a little like um, uh, My Fair Lady sort of thing. Uh, Ravenham would never refuse a debt of honor, no matter how unorthodox. So he overlooks Miss Gordon's vulgar relations to do what is necessary, escorting the unsophisticated chit, chit to balls. I feel like that's probably uh, an old-fashioned um, slur. Um, but what he expects to be an irksome duty turns out to be something quite different as he falls under the spell of his protege's innocent charm. When he lost that wager, he definitely never counted on losing his heart as well. So that one sounds good. And I just love all the covers, like all those beautiful gowns. Like, look at that one. It's like a teal blue color. It's gorgeous. Uh, so the next one is the first in the Guardian of the Bones series, and it's called Discreet, Discreet Destruction. And it uh, says, a wayward ruler of the London underworld, the woman determined to protect him at all costs. 
Where betrayal and obsession meet, does love stand a chance in this adventure-filled historical romance? He's oblivious to the danger bearing down on him. A titan of the rookeries, the last thing Declan Rudderton needs in his life is another thing to worry about. He has multiple gaming, says gaming hells, I think that's probably supposed to be gaming halls, uh, and his ever-expanding London empire that he has to manage. And it seems, as of late, he's been bothered by the occasional alleyway knife fight far too often. Yet he pushes forth, holding on, barely, until the day he discovers the maid he depends on to run everything around him isn't anything he thought she was. She's more, too much more. A betrayal, a temptation like no other. Hmm, okay, well that one sounds interesting. I mean, this guy's getting into knife fights and, you know, there's betrayal and... I mean, I don't know. It sounds pretty exciting. So the next one is, uh, let's see here. Uh, the next one is the Roxton Family Saga. And it's, again, the first in the series. And look at the clothes there. I mean, the way that they're dressed with the, the hair back and the big gowns. And, yeah, it's pretty amazing. It says, 1760s England and France, based on real events, a hasty midnight marriage establishes a dynasty. After years in exile, Julian returns to claim a bride he doesn't know. To his delight, he discovers she is everything he's hoped for. Unaware they are already married, Deb is content with her independent life. Julian's challenge is to have her accept him on his merit, even though she has no choice at all. The future of the Roxton dukedom depends on it. And it says it's set in the opulent world of aristocracy and inspired by real events. Hmm. All right. Uh, the next one is, I just love this cover as well. Um, if you take a look, it's called A Rebel Without a Rogue. And look at the woman in her lovely green dress there. And then she's got a, a pistol in her hand. So I think there's more to her than meets the eye too. So this one is number one in the Pennington series. And it says, Fiona Cameron has devoted her life to avenging the death of her father hanged as a traitor during the Irish Rebellion of 1798. Now, on the eve of her 30th birthday, only one last miscreant remains, Major Christopher Pennington, the English army officer who not only oversaw her father's execution, but falsely maligned his honor. Fianna risks, risks everything to travel to London and confront the man who has haunted her every nightmare. Only after her pistol misfires does she realize her sickening mistake, the Pennington she wounded is far too young to be the man who killed her father. Oh, okay. Well, so maybe it was his father that did it. Oh, my. All right. So that should be interesting. Um, I don't know whether she'll go to jail for that or whether they're going to try to want to hang her back then, but we'll see what he does. And the next one um, uh, is called Lord of Chance, and it's number one in the Rogues to Riches series. And it says, uh, disguised as a country mist, country miss, Charlotte Devon flees London, desperate to leave her tattered reputation behind. In Scotland, her estranged father's noble blood will finally make her a respectable debutante, except she finds herself accidentally wed to a devil-may-care rogue with a sinful smile. He's the last thing she needs and everything her traitorous heart desires. Charming rake Anthony Fairfax is on holiday to seek his fortune and escape his creditors. When an irresistible Lady Luck wins him in a game of chance and a slight mishap has them leg shackled by dawn, the tables have finally turned in his favor, but when past demons catch up to them, holding on to new love will mean destroying their dreams forever. So that sounds really intriguing. I uh, I can't even imagine how they end up in leg shackles and, and all these things. So it uh, it sounds really good. And apparently um, it says something about, oh, I can't read that. Just a moment a second here. Uh, something about if you like the Bridgertons, you're going to like it. So I don't know. We'll see. I do like the Bridgertons, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, and then I have two other ones, and I'm not sure, again, whether I'll get to all of these, but I'll do my best. Uh, but the other two are actually arcs uh, from NetGalley, so those ones, um, I will make sure that, that they're read during the month because um, I don't like to let them go past when they're supposed to be in. So the first one is called The Grim Steeper, and it's the Witch's Brew Mysteries, and it's number three in that series. 
And it says amateur witch Phoebe Winchester is excited to host her first big author event at the Earl's Study, her book and tea store. The author, Sebastian Marlowe, is a famous birder excited to put Raven Creek on the map for his rediscovery of a presumed extinct bird. When Sebastian is found dead before his planned bird hike, where he expected to prove the existence of the bird to fellow birding enthusiasts, it's obvious someone wanted him to be extinct too. Sebastian had a few unfriendly encounters with his staff, including his recently fired manager, who was seen arguing with them at the author event. Phoebe is determined to figure out who killed Sebastian, worried that it will negatively affect her store's image that her biggest guest author got killed. With the clock ticking, she enlists the help of Richie of Rich Lofting, the handsome local sorry, I just gotta turn the page here. Local private investigator to help her look into the murder. It's not long before another victim is pecked off and someone close to Phoebe is a suspect. I love that. Pecked off. Cute. She'll have to work quickly to uncover the killer and figure out who's up to foul play in the third charming book in this warm and witchy series. So we're going to get a little bit of our, um, our seasonal cozies in there. So at least a couple. Uh, and the next one is another seasonal cozy. It's a sleigh ride together with you. And sleigh is S-L-A-Y. So this is number seven in the year-round cozy mystery series by Vicki Delaney. And it says, uh, Rudolph, New York shop owner, Mary Wil Wilkinson's best friend, Vicki Casey, is newly engaged to Chef Mark Gross of, and is moving into the historic Cole home, a home surrounded by drama, intrigue, and a possible haunting that is in desperate need of renovation. The wedding is just three weeks away, but all is not bliss for the newly engaged couple as estranged relatives of the late owner fight over her will. Then late one night, Vicky and Mary come across a dead body in the garden of Cole House, and Mark is the one standing over the corpse. Uh-oh. It says, as Detective Diane Simmons focuses on Mark as the prime suspect, Mary, Vicky asks for Mary's help to clear her fiancé's name in time for the wedding. As they dig deeper into the connection between the house, coal relatives, and town residents, past and present, it becomes clear that plenty of people wanted the victim dead. With a bakery to run and the busy Easter weekend fast approaching, a house to renovate, and a fiancé to clear of a murder accusation, Vicky's wedding may end up on the chop chopping block. Well, that's interesting because um, it is coming out uh, in September, but I don't know, for some reason, um, it all looks very Christmassy to me, not Easter-like. So that's interesting. Maybe it starts. I mean, it says year-round Christmas mystery. How did we get to Easter? <laughs> I'm not really sure, but I guess we'll investigate that when we read the book. So that's what we've got going on for September. So looking forward to all of those. Some of them sound amazing. I also have a couple on my shelves um, that I haven't, um, haven't pulled out yet. So it's a big if, but if we were to read all of those, um, I do have a couple on my shelf that I can pull out and we can add those in. But I have a feeling that I'll be lucky to get through those. Um, I've got a lot of... Um, uh, different therapies over the next uh, few weeks so I'm going to like two three appointments a week and uh, and between that and just you know the regular stuff um, I don't know I just I haven't been very motivated to read lately and I'll be honest there's two um, different channels on YouTube that I have been watching far too much of um, they are reaction channels where you read their these people are watching um, singers um, from, you know, a lot of them are from when I was growing up and they're watching them for the first time and then reacting to the videos. And so I've really been enjoying those probably a little too much. And my daughter told me today that she read an article saying that, you know, you shouldn't watch too many of those and it gives you that dopamine hit from something someone else did. And instead you should go do something. So I'll keep that in mind this week. Uh, we'll try to get more reading done. All right. So have a great day, friends. I hope you're doing well. And uh, I hope you're you know, ready for September, that you've got everything in line for sending the kids back to school or maybe going back to school yourself or starting something new. Um, I always found September to be an exciting month because 
kind of like January 1st. I always feel like September is a um, one of those start over kind of months where you can start something fresh and new, maybe take a new course or something. Uh, so anyway, whatever you do, I hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon, friends. Bye-bye.